Good morning. Well, this is it. It is three o'clock in the morning. Uh, Monday morning, bank holiday Monday. I'm full of a cold <laughs> and we are off to Spain. So we've uh, got up at two o'clock in the morning. We're hitting the road and uh, hopefully, no mishaps, we will see you at Gatwick. My rucksack got ripped to shreds and we had to empty it all out. made it to Malaga and here is our car a bloody Vauxhall Mocha I booked a Vitara yeah booked a, a, a Vitara like the Suzuki like we got and I got a Vauxhall Mocha but never mind so here's the gear here's the car Ooh. after our first mishap being called off the plane for rip baggage let's uh well first thing we've got to do is find a decathlon seven for gas away. seven minutes away there's a decathlon so uh, okay. we're going to get the car loaded up and I'll see you back at decathlon We're in Decathlon and we had this problem last year. We had to go to a couple of shops. You can only get the Easy Click Push Fit fittings. So we're having to buy a stove to go with it. So pointless bringing our stoves. So bear that in mind. If you come to Europe, maybe bring a Push Fit because we know that everyone sells those fittings. And cans, yeah. Yeah, so two cans of gas from one of these. Okay, so we've got the gas. And a new stove. And a new stove. And when we came out here, I meant to say, the weather was horrendous. Up the mountain today, it's minus seven and um, snowing. It's been snowing for two weeks. At the bottom, it's 22. So did we know what to pack? God. So we've got the gas. So that's where, like I said, worth bearing in mind, if you're coming to Europe, buy a easy click system, not the screw on ones, because they're harder to find over here. We found that in Switzerland as well. We had to go to uh, the third shop to find our gas fitting. So, We've just bought a gas stove, so next time we come, we won't have to bother. And there's my horrible little mocha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good afternoon, and finally, welcome to Spain. We've just pulled over. We've come off the... We've come along from the coast road, from the airport, turned left to Granada, headed up, and we've hung a right off through the mountains. And this is the view, and it's, oh, it's great. It's 20 odd degrees. It's beautiful. There's Lucy in the car. So we are starving. So we're just gonna literally pull over and cook up some rice, um, boil up some water, because we are absolutely starving. And, uh, it is a beautiful day, but as you can see, right in the distance up there, there's snow, and that's nowhere near one of the high peaks, if you look around here. So it looks like we are going to need the crampons after all. So, we're going to sit here, have something to eat, and I will bring you back a bit later because we've got loads to do today. We've got to get to a place called uh, 
Capilera. Uh, we came here 14 years ago, it was the last time we came here mountain biking and we set off and our base was a place called Bubion. And we're heading there now but we're going to the next village up which is Capilera. Uh, we're going to leave the car and then do the usual, head off into the, into the hills for the next five days. So it's when we rented the car out, they wouldn't let me have it until I told them where I was staying. Oh yeah, I mean after 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 being pulled off the airplane, I didn't really explain. We actually got pulled off the airplane and taken down to the tarmac to inspect our bag, which was just in tatters. Luckily, my rucksack undamaged, but my axe was out everywhere. So they allowed me to take my poles on the plane, and they gave us another bag on the tarmac, and we tried to stuff everything in and we held up the plane wasn't our fault and then we get to hire the car and they want an address of a hotel they won't let us have the car so we just quickly looked one up on google in Boobion and and we've told them we're staying there so bear that in mind if you're going to do what we do you need an address for the car hire firm some firms um, so just pick a local hotel and just give them that as a, as a name okay let's get some food down us and uh, I'll bring you back later when I was in Decathlon, I was talking about the gas fittings. This is what I'm talking about. See, there's no thread on it. So, here's the new stove. And literally, I believe you just push, I believe you just push and twist. And that's it. That's the fitting. So, I've got a crappy new stove, which I didn't want, but there you go. What can you do? Right, so the second problem we've got is my pot won't fit. On that as you can see it's just too shallow and obviously we didn't think of that in the shop what a pain it's gonna be a disaster don't know if you can hear that well, there you go one of the first things I notice when you go abroad is a different bird song have a listen down there beautiful river So, the fun begins. Hiya. This is called Ojiva, and uh, Ojiva is, it's like a traveler's hippie capital. Ooh. Millions of backpackers and loads of hippies everywhere. It's a lovely place, real classic Spanish um, architecture, which I love. So we've got to get out of here, and then we'll head through Bubion and to Capilera. We're nearly at Boobion now, and uh, they're the peaks we're heading for, so we're heading out that way. So it looks interesting. They're all uh, over 3,000 metres, so it should be a good one. Oh, you can do. Yeah, and then go that way. Watch out, the main Hello and welcome back. We are all set up. Backpacks on, and we're ready to head into the mountains for the next four nights, um, the plan is to head from here, which is Capilera, and we're going to head up to the Refugio de Pocera. Yep. De Pocera, which is around 2,500 meters. As it stands, we're at 1,455. Yeah. 1,455 meters at the moment, so mm, we may well not get there today, but that doesn't matter. That really doesn't. We've had trouble finding the start of the trail, but we know where it is now. So, welcome along on this one. Welcome along on our Spanish adventure and uh, let's see how this one goes. Okay, we've just come out of this beautiful little town and this is the official start of our trail because we're here. We we're heading to the Refugio Pocchiera. So we're going this way we and then we're going to carry on to Mulhassen. So we're starting here. Staying around here for the night, but I expect to get around here. This is a 19 kilometre round robin, round route. So, uh, like I said, we're heading up here to there, and we are following the PRA 23, which we cross check the signs, which are brilliant in Spain. There it is, Hasicrias del Poquera, PRA 23. I think the hardest bit is finding the very start of your route. Yeah, the hardest bit is walking through all the houses and up drives and stairways. I love the feeling that car park room was down there. Yeah, you just wouldn't think that that's where we came from. But there you go, it's 
It's boiling, it's, tw it's 25, 26 degrees, but it's raining, <laughs> thankfully. Very dusty, but very rainy at the same time, very odd. And as you can see, just up there, and that's not very high, there's still a good deal of lying snow. So there's going to be snow up there. We've got crampons, we haven't bought the ice axes, we decided not to. We've got poles, um, we can manage as long as we've got crampons. So, hey, shall we uh, head off, eh? This is it. Nice and slowly. Nice and slow. <laughs> We're absolutely shattered. No. Onwards and upwards. Now these, these we're going to follow all the way up. These are the fresh water supply. I can't remember what they're called. Aquieris or something. But they're small little aqueducts and what they do, the farmers, the farmers have set times to open their gates up on the mountains. So this will be rushing past and there'll be an open gate. Uh, a closed gate, the farmer will open it, water is filled for half hour, an hour, close it, next farmer down will do it. But you can drink this water. This is one of the only places that I've been where we can, you can drink the fresh water and it's heavenly. We won't risk it this low, but further up I'll have no problem drinking it. So, ah, so we're uh, going to fill up, fill up Lucy's filter bottle because it's hot. Even though it's clouding over, it really is getting warmer. And that's where we're headed, up there. Well, right, these are the signs we're following. Oh, little lizards. There it is, the A23. Are there lizards about again? Yeah, lizards just run through there. Oh, there's loads about, isn't there? Yeah, we're just having our first break because I am shattered. Um, I could hardly breathe up there with my chest. So we are having a rest, having a coffee, eating loads of protein, I've eaten loads of snacks. And we're just sat here, I mean, look behind Lucy. There's the mountains we're heading up. You all right, darling? Yeah, I'm good. Good. And look at the water flowing past. It's lovely. These are the, what are they called? Asequia? Asequias. Asequia. So, endless supplies of fresh water. So we just scooped the bowl in there and off we went, boiled it up. So, fantastic. So we're actually relaxing a bit into it now. It's always a bit stressful the first day, especially finding the trail, getting out the airport, finding the hire car, stopping for gas, buying a new crappy, I mean, look. Look what I've got to use. <laughs> Coleman thing, but. I know Coleman are good, don't get me wrong, but this is pants. But there you go, live and learn. Can't bring gas, so there you go. But this is what's opposite me, and we are still low down. We are, oh, we're only at about 1,575 metres. We've done about 130 metres climbing. Ah, oh, just relaxing. We, I don't think we're gonna make it up to the uh, refuge or the Pokera tonight. It's too far, tomorrow. but we can have lunch there tomorrow. And then head up to Mulhathen or Mulhathen. So, we are going to continue our rest for a little while and then plod on and I'll bring you back when we're on the trail. I'll speak to you later. This is an old abandoned small town. I mean, they used to, used to uh, run the power station or build it, one of the two. But everywhere's just abandoned. Like this. Wow. It's gone to rack and ruin. This is another abandoned place. It's a very odd looking mural at the end. You can see the weather catching up with us now. That's the inverse. So we're the clouds soon. So there won't be much views, but look at this. Amazing. There's the pipe coming down, smashes it across there into a turbine, and then releases it just below us. And that is powering all the towns locally. Brilliant. So look at this shitty weather coming. What a shame. Rain, fog. This should be it for the evening for us. Unfortunately, we'll be setting up in the rain, so 
Look at it. Beautiful that way you've got there. The snow on the mountain, blue sky, turn your back, and in it comes. Here comes Lucy. Thunder's rumbling above us, worryingly. But getting steep now, proper. Got thunder. Yep. <laughs> Wow. And then, up here. Mm -hmm. Thunder. I do not like that as we're going high. Um, do we move, carry on? All the goats. Pretty epic views now. This is what we came for. I don't mind that cloud. It makes it look more dramatic. It's like being in Thailand again. There goes Lou. That was lightning. Yeah. I thought it was going to scare you. No, lightning just flashed. Well, it hit the power station before it hit us. There you go. Oh dear. Oh, this is not good. Let's see if we can find shelter. Right? Yeah, well, I know you're not meant to stay near trees, but it's better than being out in the open when you're the highest thing above ground. I knew this, I was, I was worried this would happen. I don't like thunder on mountains. They're about the most vulnerable thing going. We're carrying poles. We've got metal in the frames of our backpacks, cooking equipment. And once we clear the tree line, you're the highest thing above the ground. Well, you're literally a magnet. You should be sat there on your bag, really, but... Well, I'm lucky there's power lines like that. I am a bit of a big girl's blouse when it comes to the lightning. <laughs> Not at home, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. I'll sit out in the garden. I wouldn't, couldn't care less. Up mountains, different story. Lucy, however, doesn't give a damn. No, I don't. We have decided to camp right here, Cowpat City, unfortunately, but it's a nice level spot. Um, there's our trail. So we're dead close to the trail. The mountain's getting closer. We are never going to make the Refugio de Poquera in time today. I am absolutely dying. Well, I'm tired anyway. We got up at two o'clock in the morning, but I've had this cold and I can't catch my breath. Lucy's just leaving me behind, having to wait all the time. So we're going to take it easy today, maybe change the plans of the whole walk, maybe just do uh, Mulathen and uh, and that'll be it, maybe not the other peaks, but so be it, it doesn't matter, it's beautiful, it's absolutely stunning. It keeps raining, it keeps thundering, it keeps going sunny and lovely, a bit of everything. I mean, look, this is down in the valley that we've just come from. You can see the cloud down there. Coming in again. <laughs> yeah, we're at about, we're at around 1,750 metres. So, uh, yeah, we're going to set up camp, but before we do, I'm having a coffee and a rest for 20 minutes. And uh, I'll get back to you when we set the tents up. There's that inversion I was time lapsing, and my goodness, is it coming in quick. We're going to be sat in the fog in about two minutes so uh, we're gonna have a cup of coffee because we're knackered so we're having a warm coffee and then we're gonna set the tent up let's face it no one's gonna see us in this fog and mist look at it look how quick it's moving can you see it there we go. yeah we just had a massive dog up there 
staring down at us. Hope staring down at us. So we're hoping it isn't a farmer's or something. Because there was a sign down there, it was a national park and you're not allowed to camp here. Whereas ah. you are, when we looked it up, so... And you are allowed to camp, to sleep inside... Yeah, you're allowed to sleep... refuges, in you can't camp. Yeah, it's mad, mad rule. So, okay. No doubt, there will be no view soon. Because that's past me now. Mm -hmm. And here it comes, there you go, it's in the field we're in. See it, passing the sun. Oh, so... Yeah. Goodbye views, it's going to be a damp night, but there you go, we'll get set up in a little while. Welcome back, as you've probably just seen, we've got the tent set up, and look at this. No sooner has that valley just absolutely, this inversion just covered us. You could hardly see anything at all. Now you can see, see the hilltops, and there are the Land Shan twos. And, uh, there you go. Peak is clear, sky is blue. Well, life don't get much better than this. Sorry, I think you're steaming up again. Let me get rid of that, that lens, it's no good. Right, there you go, that's the lens cover because it's so damp. But this is brilliant. Now you can see down the valley and you can just see, I, I can't pick them out for you, but there's one. There's waterfalls just hammering the whole way down. And it's beautiful. What a place to camp on your first night. I'm quite glad we didn't push on actually. This is nice. The only problem is, oh, quite frankly, there's shit everywhere. But most of it's dry, so we're just gonna kick it out the front of the tents and that'll be that. So, we've had a coffee. We're gonna get our sleeping stuff set up, have another coffee, maybe a swig on the old Jack Daniels and uh, relax for a while. <laughs> Excuse me sniffing, I've been doing a lot of that and uh, I'll catch up with you later. We have had a disaster. <sighs> when we were on the way over we were using the, the iPhone and the iPhone lead to um, navigate. The car didn't come with sat nav. We left it in the car, we got no way of charging the phones. No way of keeping the phone alive for four or five days with the drone. So, I'm going to be flying blind this whole uh, holiday. What a nightmare. I'll have to keep it in view. What a nightmare. Never mind, never mind. These things happen. It seems to happen a lot to us. <laughs> okay. Disaster number one. Hello, guys. We're eating to get rid of our depression for making our schoolboy error of leaving our iPhone charger leads in the car. Can't believe we've done that. So the plan now, um, I've turned my phone off, I've got about 60% charge, so if the weather's okay tomorrow, I'll get a bit of flying in with the screen, and we're gonna make it up to uh, Pokehera Refugio. And then, hopefully, fingers crossed, someone will have an iPhone lead up there, and we can get a full charge. And then I can do a bit of flying then, and a bit of flying the next day. But, um, disaster. So. Tonight, I'm having oriental chicken with rice. What a surprise, 800 calorie meal. Absolutely beautiful. Rice, peas in it, um, sweet corn. One of my favorites, really good. So, what a great start. We will uh, bring you back later. Good evening. Oh, it's about four. What time do you think it is, Luce? About half 10. It's about half past 10. We should have been in bed about an hour ago. We were shattered, but um, we're still shattered, obviously. Yeah, we pushed it a bit hard today, and with my cold, I think, uh, I think I've think uh, i overestimated what I can do, to be honest with you. So we might change the plan. Head to the hut, eat, uh, go and camp somewhere, then do Mullathen, and then head back to Capillera. We'll see, we'll see. I've been bopping antibiotics for my chest, um, so hopefully they might kick in tomorrow, you never know. Um, we've also been sat here kicking ourselves for leaving both iPhone leads in the car. We just can't believe we did that. Um, so yeah, we're shattered, absolutely knackered. Um, we've been on the go far too long. So, good night. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Hopefully we'll have a bit better luck. So, uh, good night. We'll see you in the morning.
Good morning guys. Um, it's the middle of the night. It's probably two o'clock in... One. What is it? One. Half one in the morning and I've just been woken by a big crash and... Oh, excuse me, off asleep. Something was pulling, pulling something out of my tent. And it was a fox with its head in my tent. It went for the rubbish bag, ran up the field with it, and it came back. It was trying to drag out, drag out the Ortley bag, believe it or not. So, I have, I have heard you got to watch your stuff from foxes. Um, blimey, yeah, fox's head in my tent, that was a new one. So anyway, um, that was exciting, I'll see you in the morning.